Good afternoon, this is Chris with Xfold. Today we're going to be showing you the unboxing and setup for your aircraft, the Dragon Hybrid U8 with the 2400 generator motor on it. As you can see here, the aircraft is going to come in the case. The motors will actually have the props off for the sidearms, and they'll also be in the case. The generator will be in a separate case, and then you'll also have the radio, the starter, and additionally the legs in there as well. You're going to need some tools and for those tools you're going to want a two and a half millimeter hex head wrench or straight screwdriver style and a 5.5 millimeter uh, combination wrench a pair of uh, small pliers will be helpful as well try to have some zip ties on hand they'll make your life a little bit easier when routing all the wiring what we're going to do now is go ahead and remove the aircraft from the box and we're going to go ahead and put the legs on this is typically best done as a two-man job so when the aircraft is picked up You'll notice that there's two sets of legs. One has red bumpers and one has black bumpers. When you install the, the uh, legs, do the black bumpers to the front of the aircraft. That's easily identified by the camera that's on the front. Those legs just pop straight in. You want to make sure they're fairly straight when you put them in there. There's little receivers inside, and you'll see those when you actually put it together. The reds go on the back to identify the rear of the aircraft. Just think of the uh, concept of brake lights. They're typically to the rear. And that'll help you identify when the aircraft's flying what orientation it's in as well. Next, you're going to see our fellas here installing the generator. This system will actually be improved on the next iteration, but with these, we have some simple clamps. What you'll do is you'll notice in the front, you'll see these clamps are installed, and these clamps are not on the back plates. The reason for that is you slide this through, line it up with the white tape, and slide them up to the front. Keep in mind the generator orientation is going to have the exhaust to the front and the starter to the back, because that's the way you're actually going to engage the starter. Once those are slid inside of those clamps, you'll install the clamps on the aft of the aircraft. And here you'll see Jake and Roger installing the bolts through. It is best to put the bolts in with the head pointing down and the lock nuts on the top side. The reason for that is that way you can operate the driver far easier. When they come over to this side, it'll be a little easier to see what they're doing. But basically, by hanging the clamps in the front and leaving them loose, you allow yourself the ability to actually hang the weight of the generator on the front and then everybody can come to the back to do the work. So this will take just a second to get them started. And while they're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. We'll come back in just a second. Okay, so at this point we've gone ahead and installed the bolts. As you can see, the head is on the bottom again, so you can run the driver up to it. And then the lock nuts are up on the top here. So that actually locks everything into place. You'll see that the white tape lines up there, right up against the back side of the clamps for each one. And as they're finishing tightening all this stuff up, we're going to start going through the wiring itself for connecting it. So it's a fairly simple setup. Roger, I'll have you go ahead and plug everything in for me. What you're going to want to do is route the wires so that they're not going to hang down in the way. Here you see Roger holding the servo connection. And you can see that it only goes in one way, so you want to make sure you don't try to force it. The connection for the GCU, which is the generator control box, plugs in right there. That's the big plug. So you can see there's multiple wires coming out of that, and it's got a little catch on it, so you want to make sure that it latches so that it doesn't disconnect during flight. Your power cable connections are going to connect to the generator cable that comes out of the very bottom of the aircraft. And you want to make sure you don't mix these up. They go, they look very similar to the battery connections. You'll have extensions with an adapter on there for the smaller batteries. Those are actually going to come out over here where the backup power batteries attach. All right, so that being said, we're going to go ahead and move on to swinging the arms out. So when you swing the arms, you're going to want to remove the hardware that is mounted right here. This hardware is, consists of a thumb screw and a locking bolt. Try to work with the focus here for you. So a little easier to do with two hands. You see the other guys are doing the same. So basically just undo those, 
Roger will finish that one up for me. At that point, you're going to swing the front arms out first. And you're going to put those where the arrows indicate and not back here. So that's for a different configuration of aircraft. So just make sure you use the arrows for your indication. The bolts just drop through. Once that's done, you'll go ahead and reinstall the thumb screw snugly on the bottom, not over tight, otherwise it'll be very hard to get off when you go to, re, uh, to take the aircraft back apart to store it again. And as you can see, you do that with all four arms. So again, just for the sake of showing, your bolt head to the top, your locking thumb screw to the bottom, and make sure you use the arrows to line up the bolts and not the blank holes. At this time, now that all those arms are installed, we'll go ahead and install the side arms. Side arms are actually marked left and right, so for the orientation's sake, we'll go ahead and rotate around the back of the aircraft. Again, the front is going to be where the camera is, located up there. The aft is fairly easily identified, again, if you put the red bumpers on there, so that will avoid confusion. You'll connect your wires first. These are for the ESC connections, and then these smaller wires are for your LED connections. Do that on both sides. It'll make installing it a little easier. I'm going to try to get around here to the side so that I can show you how these slide in. There's actually a groove right here. It's a little hard to see in this lighting. But your wires are going to run through there so as not to pinch. And then basically you'll slide your arm, the motor arm, in there with the wires off to the side so that they fit into that groove. Again, noting your markings left and then right is over here. And again, at this point, you just want to push it in until your holes line up. And you're going to run these bolts the opposite direction. The bolt head will go down. The locking thumb nut will go up on the top. The reason for that is simply for access. It's far easier to get a hold of that thumb screw on the top of the aircraft than it is to do if it's underneath. Okay, so once your side arms are installed and the wires are connected, you'll see that the four bolts and the four lock nuts, or excuse me, the thumb screws are actually oriented in this direction with the thumb screw up. Again, making sure your wiring connections are connected and make sure you have your left and your right corresponding to one another. So at this point, the aircraft is prepared to actually go out and fly. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take you out and we'll set it up and launch it. All right, we've taken the aircraft outside. Go ahead and strap in the batteries down. As you can see, the position of the buckles actually helps keep that battery in place. You want to make sure that you have them positioned just like this off of the corner of the battery itself. It's best to have the battery terminals pointing to the aft of the aircraft because it'll make reaching the terminals that you're going to plug into easier. So again, you're going to have your adapter that comes from the main battery power supply that goes into the aircraft to the small batteries that we use for backups and for startup. Over here, you'll see the same thing. Go ahead and plug these in for us and we'll show them how to do that. So turn the radio on first before you engage the aircraft batteries. Wait for Welcome the radio to boot up. TX. You'll see the splash screen go away. Switch warning. You may get a switch warning if your switches aren't in the appropriate position. In this case, the switch on the top right of the radio is in the wrong position. So go ahead and push that one back. There you go. And that shows you how the radio should look. Once you've done that, I'll see if I can't get an appropriate angle here so we can actually focus on the radio, but you'll see this screen. Once you see that screen, go ahead and press and hold the page button. You'll see the flight deck app appear. And that's gonna give you your telemetry. That telemetry screen is gonna tell you your battery voltage and your GPS status and several other uh, particular characteristics that tell you what your aircraft's doing. I'll have you hold on to that for just a second. Now, the beeping that you hear indicates that the ESCs are disarmed. Once we activate the aircraft after it gets a GPS lock, we're going to do that by pressing the safety switch right here. That button is pressed for three seconds, and you'll see that light turn into a, from a flashing light to a steady red light, but we're going to wait until the GPS picks up on that. If, while that aircraft is doing that, 
we're going to go ahead and have Roger do a prime function on this. To do that, it's very simple. The aircraft has a choke switch and a manual lever. You lift that lever up, you run the aircraft for about 5 to 10 seconds on the starter. And we'll go ahead and do that. Now prior to doing that, this aircraft is already pretty well primed. But there's also a primer ball on the bottom. If you press that, you'll be able to see the fuel flow through the, the hoses there and get the bubbles out. Essentially, you're just trying to clear some of the air from the line. So, Roger, go ahead and prime the aircraft for about five seconds. Okay. So the starter itself is that device right there in his hand. It's also got a battery on it. It's a four-cell battery. So that you want to make sure that's charged before you go out to the field, of course. Once that's done, the priming is complete. You go ahead and take that choke lever and push it back to the down and off position. And at this point, we'll take the radio. I'm going to come to the rear of the aircraft so that you can see the indicator. But the radio itself has an indication on the side. It has off, idle, and flight. Let's see if I can get a better shot of that for you. So basically, you do that prime in the off position, and then you'll press it up to the idle position. Once you've done that, you'll see the green indicator on the back come on about three seconds later. There's a little bit of a delay between the radio and the time that that actually kicks on. Okay, so here I'm going to give a little instruction on the radio. So, for those of you that are unfamiliar, your throttle is typically on the left. Push it up for more throttle and down to close it, of course, and if you'll want to hover at the middle position. This also controls your yaw, which makes the aircraft turn left and right. This stick here makes your aircraft go forward when you push it forward. It goes backwards, obviously, when you push aft, and it slides left or slides right when you push the stick to the left or the right. So this aircraft actually has multiple controls on it. So you have a mode switch up here that you can configure to whatever is necessary for your operation. In addition, there's a gear switch right here. To arm the gear, you have to pull the switch to the back once the aircraft's in the air, and then push it forward. And then at that point, you can pull it to the back again, and the gear will retract. This over here is a switch that we typically don't use. It's for tuning the aircraft after we actually produce them. It's not necessary unless you're going to change your payload significantly. And if you need more information on that, you can contact us, and we'll go ahead and give you some background on it. There's a volume knob right here. Oops, excuse me. The volume knob, obviously, if you turn it to the right, it's going to turn up. You turn it down by turning it counterclockwise. I like to set it in the middle initially, but when it comes time to fly, I usually set it 75% or better because you'll be here having the generator in your background. Over here, you're going to see a red switch that's pretty much inactive for the entire flight. And the same with this red switch over here. This one here will actually kill your motors, meaning that the motors will stop turning at any point that you flip that switch down. So you want to make sure you don't inadvertently hit that during flight. And in the event that you guys install a chute, both of those switches, when they're pulled downwards, will stop the motors and launch your parachute. Again, you have your generator controls over here. It's going to be your off to the down position. Idle is the center position. And flight is the position that's all the way up when you're prepared to fly. So before you launch the aircraft and actually arm it and take off, you'll make sure that you push that all the way up so you're in the flight position. That way the generator is allowed to rev up to the point where it can charge the batteries. Additionally, when you're flying the aircraft, you want to be, before you fly the aircraft, you'll want to arm the motors. To do so, you'll take this stick, leave it in the all the way down position, and then you'll push it to the left, or correction, to the right, inside. And then to disarm the motors, conversely, you'll push it to the left, and that'll shut the motors off. So make sure that you pay attention to that when you go to take off. The memory aid that I like to use is in is on, out is off. Kind of easy to remember. All right, continuing on. All right, at this point, we're ready to start the aircraft. Roger's holding the starter on the back, and as you can see, it's engaged right there on the back of that starter nub. And you'll push the button up on the, the where his thumb is there, the red button, to go ahead and make a turn. And you need to make sure it's turning clockwise from when you're looking at it from the rear to make sure it's turning the right direction. Again, we'll set that to the idle position, and we'll go ahead and have Roger start it. Go ahead, Roger. After a couple seconds, you'll hear it start to fire, and then you can take the starter away. Alright, 
So now we're ready to fly. You can see the radio. I'm going to go ahead and arm the motors. And at the same time, I want to be able to see the radio and the aircraft. So you can see the blades start turning. When I press and hold the lever into the right, you'll see the blades after about three seconds will start rotating. To disarm them, you go to the opposite direction and you'll see the blades stop. You'll also hear the radio say motor's armed or motor's disarmed. Again, before taking off, make sure all of your switches are in the aft position or ahead. You want them all pointing up or back. We'll go ahead and arm the aircraft and take off at this point. And I'll show you again the landing gear. It's going to get a little loud as the aircraft takes off. Remember, you want to make sure you're in the flight position. You'll hear the generator spin up. And at this point, I'll apply power and we'll take off. You'll want to do a control check, make sure your controls match your stick inputs, left and right, make sure you get a good hover, forward and back, and make sure your aircraft yaws as you're supposed to. Again, arm the switch right here by pulling back to the landing gear, and then pushing forward again, too close. Then pull the gear back up again, and you'll see the landing gears come up on the aircraft. At this point, you're ready to fly.